Hello guys, my name is Julio Solis. I'm leading instructor from Supreme Wonder Academy. Uh, I'm here presenting my boy Luis, my former student from Supreme Wonder Academy. How you doing Luis? Good, how about you Julio? Uh, my name is Luis Morfin. Um, I'm here in uh, Supreme Welding Academy today. I'm originally from Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas, and I've been down here for about two months uh, doing both shifts, uh, learning how to combo uh, stick and TIG, and also uh, right now I'm finishing up the pipeline course. Uh, I did a bell hole, branch, a six inch combo, a stick TIG all the way out. Something I learned while I've been here, uh, we're gonna be doing a a pipeline simulator basically on a 12 inch uh, bell hole, uh, 250 wall. Um, we have it all pepped up here and ready. All right guys, right now um, I got these uh, 16 inch spacers right here. Uh, you can use a saw blade or anything that's a 16. Uh, right now I tacked up uh, two uh, saw blades basically that way I have enough room for my 12 inch. And uh, what's really important right now is to line up your seams because like I said in, uh, earlier that's going to be the weakest part of your uh, of your pipe and always check your high low on all four corners make sure your pipe is lined up and right now we're going to put a tack here on the back side because it's the widest and we're going to put uh, three tacks all right guys right now uh we purposely did this uh fit up kind of messed up because out in the field you're never gonna have a perfect fit so what we're gonna be welding today with is uh my uh sa200 uh red face um it's in a black face uh frame but the barrel is a red face it's a 1967 uh red face and right now i'm gonna be welding in third gear and in the, anything in between 25 to 35 is uh, what I like to run my, uh, my machine at. My machine runs a little hotter than usual, uh, but this is what we're gonna be welding out the, the bell hole with. All right guys, right now on this tack, I got a, a wide fit. So I just uh, back and forth uh, this tack right now and I got a, a big keyhole. But later on in the video, I'm gonna uh, give y'all a little tip on how to, how to start from that tack. Right now we're putting in a wedge just to space it out evenly. But like I said, uh, the fit is not perfect. I'm gonna have a wider side on the other side. And um, right now I'm cutting it with the 16th inch disc and uh, cause the beveling machine was crooked. So on the field, uh, whenever you have a wider or a tighter side, I would always recommend to cut it with a cutting disc cause the cutting disc is the perfect uh, spacer. Right now I'm grinding down the tacks, feathering them down. That way when I start, it'll tie in good to the, to the bead, to the root.
right now I'm just doing a back and forth motion just to tie into the to the tack and I have a wide gap on the top right now I'm just doing a back and forth uh, mostly all the way down just because I have a wide gap I had a little over a sixteenth and I turned it down about five to ten amps whatever whatever you feel comfortable with welding uh, I usually run a little colder but that's just the way I will Right now I started off on the other side and on this side I had a pretty perfect gap so I'm just dragging it down to about the quarter of the pipe. Right now I'm just using the dragging motion, which I'm just soaking the bead in, putting a little pressure on the rod, that way it'll soak in and penetrate into the pipe. And as I go down more, the, the gap gets a little wider. So right now I'm grinding down the third tack You always want to feather your tacks down that way you're when you come in from the bead you're tying into your tack pretty good and it's one solid bead Alright guys, right now I'm doing a back and forth motion on this side just because I had a wider, a, a really wide gap on this side. And as I go down uh, on the bottom of the pipe, it gets tighter again. I just had a wide gap on both sides and on top and the bottom, it was, it was a pretty good 16th inch uh, gap. Guys, we just got the root pass uh, done all the way around. Uh, so the next step after you throw your root in, it'd be uh, grinding down your root. Um, you don't want to grind it down too much because you'll blow through with your uh, with your hot pass. But you want to grind it out enough that way your hot pass will push your root in even more. And we're gonna be running uh, the the hot pass on third gear and any anywhere between uh, 45 and 55 on third gear. And we're gonna be running with a 532nd rod, uh, 6010 5P plus. All right guys, right now I'm grinding down the root pass, but always make sure you don't grind down too much. That way you don't blow, hold, blow through your root. All right guys, right now uh, with the 532, 6 to 10, 5P plus, I'm just doing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all the way down the pipe. Uh, watching your puddle, you gotta make sure your puddle's touching both sides of the walls. That way it's it's covering most of your root pass. All right guys, we just got done uh, putting in the hot pass. Uh, the whole purpose of the hot pass is to get any trash that you have out on your root and uh, to push your root out even more into, into the pipe, make sure, making sure you have enough penetration on your pipe. 
Uh, right now, the next step is to wire wheel it, clean it up pretty good, uh, clean it up fairly good. That way, when when you're putting in uh, your next pass, which in our case we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna fill it and uh, and cap it with 8010 uh, the pipeliner rod, and uh, and then uh, we're gonna cap it after that. Uh, so just wire wheel it really clean, and you should have uh, good results after that. Alright guys, uh, we let the pipe cool down a little bit, now we're going to fill it and uh, flush it out with our uh, 8010 Pipeliner rod and uh, we're going to go all the way around and then after that we're going to let it cool down and uh, probably uh, put a single bead uh, puddle cap on top. Alright guys, right now we're putting in the hot pass. Uh, for the hot pass I used the circular motion just touching both bevel walls. You want to make sure that you leave enough wall that way you have a guideline for your cap that way you keep your cap pretty straight Alright guys, right now I'm going to continue on to the bottom side of the pipe and I'm just doing the same motion I did on top uh, all the way down to the bottom. Just doing a circular motion, making sure I tie into both walls. All right guys, now the next step would be uh, capping it and we're gonna be capping it with uh, 8010 Pipeliner Rod, uh, 316 diameter. And uh, when, you're filling, when you're filling with uh, the 8010, you want it to come out flush or a 16th under your, uh, your bevel. That way when you cap it, your cap ain't uh, over an eighth of an inch. Uh, that's the tolerance they really give welders. And uh, you always wanna grind out your, uh, your start on top that way in case it has uh, some trash in it and uh, I'm gonna be welding uh, with uh, my SA200 from 12 o'clock to 9 and from 12 o'clock to 3 I'll be doing around 65 and then from there I'll turn it down 5 to do the rest of the bottom and I'll be going side to side what they call a puddle cap.
My name is uh, Luis Morfin, and uh, for all you young guys that are out there motivated to learn more uh, in the welding industry, never, uh, never give up. Uh, just like I did, I came back uh, to welding school. I've been on the road for four or five years, single hand welding, and I wanted to learn more. I wanted to achieve more, uh, have bigger goals, and so if don't ever give up. Just don't ever give up. Always be the leader. Always try more. Uh, blood, sweat, and tears is what's going to get you ahead in life. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to this video and look forward to more videos on Arc Addicts on YouTube and uh, follow us on our social media.